The Nationals have taken a bold stance today that clearly differentiates them federally. It's on the issue of the voice, the Indigenous voice to Parliament. Now, as you know, I reckon this is the wrong call. In many ways, this is the knee-jerk reaction they've gone with to oppose the voice. This is the easy call to appeal to certain elements of the party's base. For instance, it misca mischaracterises the voice as a Labor plan, as a leftist plan, when, in fact, this whole proposal has been worked up with Conservatives for at least the last six years or more. And secondly, the Nationals have been calling for more detail. Up until today, they've been calling for more detail, and rightly so. But then today, before they've got any detail, they've opposed it outright. Why the rush? It just doesn't make any sense. Here's the Nationals' leader. And unfortunately, we've got to a position where we don't believe that this will genuinely close the gap. So the National Party has made a position that we will not support the voice uh, to Parliament. We believe in empowering local Indigenous communities, giving them the power at a local level, not creating another layer of bureaucracy here in Canberra. Well, this is the whole point of The Voice, to give local communities a voice. No one wants another level of bureaucracy. So pretending that's what a voice is about is just political spin, just trickery. The whole idea of The Voice is to make sure grassroots Indigenous Australians get to have a say about the issues that affect them. David Littleproud will join me later in the program. It'll be interesting to hear how we're doing so well on Indigenous affairs now, apparently, that we don't need to hear from Indigenous people. Interestingly, Littleproud himself, at his press conference, thought we needed to hear from an Indigenous Australian who's not even a frontbencher in his own party. We are all regarded as equal under the law. Despite race, despite gender, despite anything else. And why should I, as an Indigenous Australian, be governed under a separate entity than the rest of Australia because of my race? Now, I'm a huge fan of Jacinta Nabajimba Price and I consider her a personal friend, but what she says there is just plain wrong. The voice would not govern anyone of whatever race or background. It's merely an, an advisory body so that Indigenous Australians, those who want to, can have some input into what governments do for them and to them. It's just a fair go. And no one has to be involved. Senator Nabajimba Price wouldn't have to have any role in it. She probably doesn't need to because she already has a voice herself. But importantly, politicians wouldn't even have to listen to the voice. The advice would be non Binding. That is clear. That's always been the argument. Anyway, the big question now is whether the voice is opposed by the Liberals. This was just a National Party decision. Surely they'll at least wait to hear more detail, as Peter Dutton has been saying for some time. Labor, by the way, have just been missing in action on this issue, not providing any detail, not advocating strongly. Neither the Indigenous Affairs Minister, Linda Burney, or the Prime Minister, for instance, have agreed to come onto this program and discuss the issue. We've been asking for months. So, rest assured, the politics of The Voice, always fraught, just got trickier for the country and especially for the coalition. It's one of those issues, actually, where the Liberal moderates might actually have the right idea. They tend to support The Voice. But do they have the spine to fight for it?